she had always, one of her hopes that she always wanted to have was for me to be married and uh, settle down and have a family and she kept on asking me as I went to see her so. It reminds me of Alice in Wonderland and all of these other analogies where you fall through a hole in the ground that you've looked at all your life and never noticed there was a hole there or, or as in Narnia, there, as a, going through the wardrobe you've seen all your life and suddenly discover that by going, opening the doors you can go through the back of it into another world. Okay, you'll be positive, aren't you? Because that's emblematic of your whole life. Be positive. Thank you. That's a blood group. I have no idea what my blood group is, so I could be, be negative, for instance. It could be an O. Oh dear. You know, the zero being the the important concept in math, right? Oh yes. Nothing. Okay, never mind. Okay. Down by the hills to the land where life is a song. Sing. I've been working on Indian reserves, and I went on my walkabout like they do in, uh, in Australia and uh, I met a wonderful young lady uh, somewhere and uh, she was perhaps the main cause of going down to California. I was told not to pick up any people, hitchhikers, which of course I did do and I had a wonderful, wonderful time. Well, for instance, one of the men, um, I remember we stopped and he said, oh, got to stop in this little town. So we stopped, you know, maybe went a little bit to eat. There's this massive black man walked down the street and he said, hello, brother to the man I'd given a ride to. And he t the black man turned to me, gigantic guy, and turned to me and said, hold, hold, brother, and gave me a hug. Well, it still makes you want to cry because this, this possibility of, of instant connection with other human beings uh, that we don't know, you know, the brotherhood of, of mankind seemed to be so wonderful. So I was on my way back and I was feeling very down about coming back to what seemed to be very mercantile commercial experience in, <clears throat> in Calgary and where could I find people who were alive like this? <clears throat> and so I came along the 1A highway because it was seemed to be related to this this reality is it rather than going down the big main highway <clears throat> and uh, I got to the bottom of Cochrane Hill this would have been August 1971 and there at the bottom of Cochrane Hill the first people I'd met seen in Canada at all with long hair was John Hill the person I would get to know <clears throat> and his woman friend Nancy uh, Corbett and uh, they had big white sheets, bed sheets filled with washing and they were obviously going home having had their washing done in a laundromat somewhere. So I picked them up, drove them to what turned out to be a second house in a farmyard at uh, Henry Whitfield's. And uh, I got into the house, I felt these are my kind of people, this is a gold mine, this is fantastic. And I got into the house and I remember something that just stunned me right away was uh, eight foot high wall, eight foot wide or ten foot wide, all books. And it's just, I don't, that was a very important image on, on the whole thing. And I thought, ah, oh, in addition to having talked with them, I thought, these are my people. This is, this is like going to church or something for some people. This is, this is a gold mine for me. And so it was um, Christmas Eve 1976, so that would be five years later. Well, I, I spent many years with them, <coughs> visiting them and staying overnight and all the rest of it, and, uh, and weekends. <coughs> and then they, they emigrated to Australia. So every year I would hear from them at Christmas, and this year, Christmas Eve, Christmas before Christmas 1976, I hadn't heard from them, and I was really wanted to know, keep up the contact. Uh, I came to Henry's door and asked had he received a card, a Christmas card, or any message from my good friend John Hill in Australia. And I don't remember his response. But anyway, my, in my memory, he, we left his house, walked around the corner, walked about 50 yards up to a white picket fence. And there at the gate was Marjorie. I was teaching in Calgary, Malin Heights School, and living in a little house in Glen, on Memorial Drive called Glenwood Manor that had lots of wonderful stained glass windows, etc., etc. And um, 
So I, I had just been to Europe and really enjoying uh, living in the country and knowing that I would like to be in the country and always looking for second houses on farmyards somehow, but never, never happening. And my grandmother passed away in Calgary and I had spent some time with her and, and um, especially when she had uh, passed away, uh, just five minutes before I came to visit her, they said, don't go in there, uh, she's, uh, she's dead. And uh, I said, I want to be with her. Okay, so uh, I had a day off after uh, she passed away and I took my little orange Volkswagen out to the country and uh, looking for her in a way. And I stopped to at the Springbank Airport and there was something in the airport and flying uh, where I, I wanted to find her. After I left Springbank Airport, well, I like to visit Cochrane and Cochrane Ice Cream Store, McKay's Ice Cream, and so I went to visit the store and I got a little pint of ice cream because I was going to, and it was a better deal besides just a cone, plus, you, you know, I was going to take it home with me. I somehow saw a sign saying retreat, and it was, wow, retreat, okay, well, I'd been to the re uh, retreat area before, but never known how to get to the retreat uh, this way from Cochrane, you could go up. Uh, the hill, behind the hill, actually, through the trees, up on the little winding road uh, to get there, and, and, and I passed the retreat and kept going. And over as I got up a little bit towards the, the hill, I saw this barn, and I saw this white farmhouse. Wow, okay. Well, I know what to do. I, I, I had been going up different places and asking, you know, and this is a chance I was going to uh, take, and, but something said, oh, Oh no, oh no, uh, don't do it. And so I drove around and drove around, uh, uh, stopped for a while and just composed myself. What do you really want to do? I really want to ask those people if that place is available. It just seems really ideal. And okay, I'll do it. So I drove in the farmyard and, and knocked on the door and there's Henry Whitfield. And um, I, I said, uh, I didn't want to be too direct. I, you know, I said, do you know of a place, of any, uh, of anyone who has a place to rent? And uh, he, uh, he didn't say anything. He just opened the door and said, come in for tea. And he and Barbara and I had tea. And uh, at a certain point I said, oh my gosh, I forgot my ice cream in the, fr in the car. And so we had McKay's ice cream. We all shared it together. And, uh, and had a lovely visit. And upon leaving, he said, uh, by the way, that that place there is, is going to be available in a month or two and uh, we're not sure if we're going to rent. Give me a call. Alan cares of tomorrow must wait. I didn't know it when my friends left to go to Australia. Marjorie was the next person renting there and she didn't know either this connection either. And so Henry Redfield introduced me to Marjorie then Christmas Eve. So what happened? So you were going down the road Hen, uh, Henry had gone down the uh, the lane to get the mail, which is the mailboxes at the end of the road, and he was just coming back. He'd meet up, met up with you, and, and of course I you know, see that saw that he was getting the mail, and so I didn't have to go, and I met up with him, and, and you were there. And so there's just two different kinds of mail <laughs> in the picture. And so I was introduced, and, and, uh, and I invited you in for tea. I came in for a cup of tea, and uh, I saw another young man sitting there, and I didn't know whether what the relationship was, and it wasn't for me to ask. And I thought, well, you know, she Marjorie's got this other young man here, or another fellow, and I just had a nice cup of tea, and I didn't even give you my phone number. I don't know why. No, you didn't, and I, I was a bit interested. And I said, well, by the way, do you have a phone number? Or do you have a location or anything? And you were so... Uh, scattered about it, and you non uh, like sure. Non I'm non-committal, not sure at all. And I thought, oh, that guy. I'm not even going to think about him. Even once, he's he's telling me right there that he's not interested. So, and in May, and in May, while well, I was going to see another lady that I'd met, uh, in, and she was now living in Ontario, and so. <clears throat> this, this is a common thing. I thought, well, what, what have I got to lose? You know, I, uh, I, I want to know. Be, I have before I go to Ontario to see this young woman called June, uh, that I've met here and had a fabulous time on the coast on the big trips and things. <clears throat> I've, I've got to. I don't want to go to Ontario and not having checked out this possibility. So in May, I remember 
I, w I was ready to pack up my belongings and so on and get get the car ready to go in a, in a matter of a, a month or two. And I remember phoning Marjorie, and I let the phone ring and ring and ring. And I was just, this is my, I was there, so I know. And I was just about to put the phone uh, down on the cradle, uh, and suddenly, hello? Oh, oh, it was Marjorie. So it was microseconds of, my life would have been totally different today had not Marjorie got to the phone. You but would have did. tried again. I'm sure well, you would have, would have tried, tried again. again. But we I don't know. know. Uh, and yes, I, had just, I had just come in the house. I was basking in the sun. It was the springtime and the, there had been some spring snow and I was looking at the mountains and sitting on a rock just outside by the house. And, and really kind of blinded by the darkness when I got in the house and so the phone ringing and I'm scrambling, scrambling to get to the phone and, and uh, at that moment of true light, <laughs> light and darkness meeting. Uh, yeah, I, I picked up and the so phone. I must have, then, and I probably asked could I come over and so one thing led to another and here we are. Well now what about the wedding? The, the wonderful wedding that we had in the mountains was by Devil's Head, and it's a mountain that I always really enjoyed. That mountain called and beckoned me, and, and lo and behold, that mountain was in the main picture frame, uh, just out our, our bedroom window, and uh, sort of like I'd come home, so it was beautiful. So from February 1978, when I first came back from Ontario until we got married in May 1980, we lived in that house for 15 years, I think, mm -hmm. you said. And eventually they, they felt that um, they were getting too old to have anyone living there. We'd pretty well almost given up. <clears throat> and we actually went to the owners of where we are now. And this house has been here probably 100 years. There's no concrete under it, it's just gravel. And so... Uh, it's a log, log cabin, yeah. It's a log, log house and uh, it's been uh, idyllic for us and our family to live here.